Hi, I'm Patty, and I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, let's look at how to make a shoe fly quilt block. It is constructed of two different colors and two different shapes. I used yellow and a blue for my colors. I selected them because of the way they work with each other in terms of being complementary colors. And so that gave me contrast that I was looking for in creating a block that would really pop. I think the easiest way to set up something that is a two fabric combination for a block is to either go with light and dark or do complementary colors and you can use a color wheel to determine those. A shoe fly quilt block is constructed with half square triangles that we have in each corner and the remaining blocks are solid blocks. This is a nine square constructed block so you have three across and three down. This row is constructed by first making your half square triangles, trimming everything to the correct size. Then you're going to piece each row and then you're going to put row by row together. And of course the important part of this is to make sure that all of your intersections meet up and are nice sharp points. All of my pieces are cut and I'm ready to piece the rows and then put the rows together. And what I want you to see is everything laid out before we start doing the actual sewing. It is so easy to get yourself turned around when you go to put your blocks together. And so you may not catch that you've got something off just a little bit. So it's funny how your eye doesn't always pick it up looking at it, but a trick that you can do is when you have the block laid out and ready to start uh, taking to the sewing machine, just take a picture of it with your phone and then look at the picture. And the picture will tell you if something is out of place because honest to goodness, it's so easy to miss something. It seems so obvious when you look at it this way, but I promise you when you're actually doing the uh, the design you can miss it so this is our correct orientation this is how we want to put everything together a little trick that i do when i get ready to take things to the sewing machine is i know that i want to put this and this together and so as i flip this piece over what i will do is to put my wonder clip on this side and then that will tell me when I'm at the machine that oh this is the side that I want to sew on. I will chain piece and what I will do is sew this one, this one, and this one. I'll press and then we'll put these to this, these to that, and so on. And then the rows together. Our three rows are put together and I've laid them as they're going to piece together for the final block. I want you to see the back. 
pressing is very important when you're doing your quilting because you want to have your seams as flat as possible and you want to make sure that when you get a join your pieces that it's easy to get the seams to line up. So deciding how you want to press your work before you even start is really important. What a lot of people will do is press everything to the dark side. And I do that in the half square triangles. But when I am piecing half square triangles into a block, I always press my seams open. And I do that so that I can see the point of the tip of that triangle and that is a visual cue for me as I'm sewing that seam that I know I have to stay on the outside of the point in order that I still have the point on the, the block itself. Uh, so I, I press open. That is just my particular method. And you can see, as I mentioned to you in the last segment, it's so important to make sure that you, as you're putting your your objects together, your blocks together, that you have them in the right place. And you can see here as I turn that over, that's not quite right. That's sort of fun and interesting for a different design, but today we're doing churn dash. So I want to make sure that everything's going the right way. So the next step that I'm going to do is to sew these two together. And I want to make sure that these seams all line up when that's pieced. I will put this onto there and then we'll have a completed block. So easy to put together but still very rewarding and so pretty and I just love this block, especially for beginners, because it lets you really play with just two colors. And you can really go to your stash and experiment with the two colors. I wound up using non-directional prints. I think that's easier. <laughs> so if you can come up with non-directional prints in color complementaries, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. Anyway. Here it is put together. This is the front of our block. Let me show you the back. So you can see that when I press my work, I follow the practice of pressing my seams open. And I do that because for me, it's just how I like to do it. And it gives me a quilt top that lays very flat and it really lets me see where my points are as I piece this block into a finished whatever it is I'm going to make. I can easily find that location of the points which are what I need to be looking for as I put this into a larger finished project. And I do have a project in mind for it and I invite you to stick around and see where it winds up going. Until then, I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.